Hello, that was a bit of a croaky start. Hello, That's and welcome to episode 100. This is the best. Uh, episode 177 of Heroes of Handheld. This is the podcast dedicated to handheld gaming. That includes Nintendo Switch, Nintendo 3DS, 2DS, and I can't remember the name of it, but even the new 2DS that's been announced very recently, the 2DS XL, I think it was called or something. Um, I've probably said Vita. PlayStation Vita, PSP, your iPhone, your uh, an Android device. If it's if it's associated with the world of handheld game, we're going to talk about it. Gosh darn it, we're going to talk about it. And I'm one of your hosts. I'm Colin, and I'm joined by the man with the spiky looking haircut today. It's uh, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi, missed you, missed you, missed <laughs> you a billion. What did you do? Did you uh, you look too, after? Did you look after? Did you feed our cats whilst we were away? Did you water the plants? Did you? Uh, no, I I fed the cat to the plants. Is that not right? Oh damn! It's because I've got all those bloody Venus fly traps. Oh no! <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> marvelous. Uh, it's great to be back. Well, not really, but it's great to be doing this podcast again. I just feel there's like a big void in my life now, Chris, because the big holiday is over with. I feel sad, you know. I need I need something else to fill the void. So it's probably going to be handheld gaming. I've not played any. This is quite bad to say this, but I've not really played any games since I got back from holiday. <laughs> honestly, honestly, like that was last week. I've just had no time. But but soon soon I'm going to be playing the Batman Telltale game. I, I'm dedicated. I want to play that. Have you played that yet? I know you were going. To be no, 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 not yet. I was because I'm waiting for you. You said wait for me. That's a lie. That's a darn lie, and you know it. But um, yeah, I do. I do need to play that, and I, I'm finally going to buy Mass Effect because I found out I've got like twenty pounds worth of nectar points to use up. Uh, twenty pounds worth. Of nectar, yeah, nectar points. Yeah. So I'm going to use that at my local Sands Braz, and I'm going to get a copy of that because it's about forty quid now. I remember when Mass Effect Andromeda first came out; it was fifty, around about the fifty mark. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to wait a few months till it gets down to the 40 mark, and it's already dropped. It's 42.99 on Amazon, I think, and that's the same price in most of the shops. So it's already dropped about eight quid, which is good. So uh, looking forward to finally playing that. Why, why am I talking about Mass Effect? Let's let's you know properly introduce ourselves more. We haven't really spoken to you yet, Chris. How are you, man? How how's it going, bro? Are you okay? It's going well. Yeah, I am okay actually, Colin. Uh, we had a good couple of weeks once you were gone. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't do a, didn't do a podcast last week because because uh, me and Emma, who was on the show the week before last, uh, were going to see Matilda, which is obviously dope. <laughs> dope, yeah. It, it, it did sound I've, dope. We described it. Yeah, it's really good. I've had a quite a good quite a good couple of weeks. I've been at the cinema a lot. I've played a lot of games. Um, most evenings I've been playing something. Uh, yeah, it's been alright. I'll tell you what I what I did on Sunday. What did you do on Sunday? Which what is nothing do? to do with nothing to have had her games, but I wanted to mention right. it. Well, right. because people who are listening will like it. I went to see um, a re-release of Mad Max Fury Road in black and white. In yeah, in black and chrome, and it oh, was and so it was so good. Like mm. it was just incredible. Um, it was just a so, film, but black and chrome. Yeah, but I've not. Yeah. I haven't seen. I didn't see it when it was out of the cinema the first time. Right. So to okay. me, this was like this was the experience, you know. The experience. So good. Yeah, I heard. It's so good. What makes it so? Why does it being in black and chrome make it so good? Because the the bloke who directed it originally wanted to direct it in in black and white, and the studio convinced him out of it. But it's got such these like amazing kind of landscapes, and I don't know. It, it just feels like it should be in black and white. But that's probably because you've not seen it in colour. Yeah, poss possibly. I think with a film like that, where there's so many great uh, landscapes and you know vast uh, backgrounds and foregrounds, it feels like it's doing a bit of a disservice by not being in colour, to be honest. It seems like you're taking away some of the effect of the film. But that's, uh, and also some of the explosions and the fire and crap like that. So I would have thought that would have been, would have been better in colour. I disagree because when it's in black and white, I think your eye is more drawn to the detail of the constructions. So you're more looking at the cars and like all the gear, gear weapons, and oh, it's just so good. Um, so yeah, if people are looking for something to do, I'd really recommend going to see that because it was really good. I do need to watch that film. I hear really good things about it. Um, everyone says it's amazing. I've not watched any of the old Mad Max films. No, I hadn't seen the old ones either. I've not played any of the games either, so but it seems like a cool, um, 
um, post-apocalyptic world. And you know, it's our, everyone's favorite actor, isn't it? As well. So didn't he? Didn't he? Um, Tom Hardy? Didn't he recently like arrest someone for like stealing a bike or something? Was that, I was in the news or something? Yeah, there was. Oh, there was something about a guy stole a moped and he chased them down. Yeah. Does that ring really bells? It, it was something to do with I'm going to have to quickly research this, but come on, doesn't that just make him even more dreamy? Yeah, I wanna, like, I'm going to nick a moped so that he'll arrest me. <laughs> Tom Hardy is just literally like the dream. Like, I'm, I am not gay, but even I would for him. He's just such a, he's just a beautiful specimen, isn't he? Oh, boy. Yeah, he's, anyway, he's, uh, uh, quite what something. was it? Uh, Tom Hardy moped. Anyway, yeah, can we, should we, what have you, so you've not really been playing anything. Do you want to know what I've been playing? Oh, there's, there's been an update on this. Apparently he lied. A woman has claimed that Tom Hardy lied about chasing down Moped Thief. Tom Hardy should admit it wasn't him. Oh dear. Uh, there's loads of articles here saying that he didn't actually chase down anyone. A woman did it and he just took the uh, credit. Lol, lol. Oh, Tom. Tom, I hate him now. But um, <laughs> you're... I mean, the problem is with him, like, if anything goes wrong in his life, if he ever does anything bad, you just have to say to him, your punishment will be more severe. More severe. Do you think when he dumped on the, on the guy, yeah. taking away the moped, he whispered in his ear, <laughs> they expect one of us in the wreckage, brother! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like to think that's what happened. Um, why are we talking about Tom Hardy? I don't know. Oh, he was in Mad uh, Max, wasn't he? Mad, Mad Max, Max, yes. Yeah, great um, film. Go check it out. It's not, I think there's some good games this week. Actually, before we get into your games, because yours are going to be much more interesting, I just want to quickly say something I've been playing. You know, going to America, <laughs> right. honestly, I forgot I was supposed to mention this at the top of the show. I went to America. I'm still playing Pokemon Go. I know Chris deleted it a while ago, but by going to America, I am entering an area where you get Pokemon that you don't get in Europe. There's Pokemon that are exclusive to North America and that region of the world. And there's three in total, I believe, at the moment. I caught two of them, and I'm very happy about that. Oh, just... The one I didn't catch was Taurus. I couldn't find Taurus anywhere. Looked high and low in the castle. I looked, you know, in Cinderella's castle. I looked under uh, Mickey Mouse. It, it just wasn't anywhere. But the two I did catch, I'm just going to get the names of them because I always forget. They're part of the new generation. Uh, the first one looked a bit like a... Oh, I don't know what it looks like. It looks like, like a bit of sea coral. Um, coral uh, cor oh, Corsola. Corsola. Yeah, I caught two of those. Um, I've got a little picture on my, the webcam. I look at a little Corsola there. Look at him. Little bubbles. and so cute. Uh, and I also caught the one that looks like a beetle. I uh, can't remember what it was. Honestly, I don't know how people Her remember oh, Heracross. That's it, Heracross. I caught Heracross as well. Ignore the ridiculous 280H uh, P, a CP. But look at that. Look how cute he is. Tap him. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, I caught those two. I was very happy about that. The first, I caught two of the Heracrosses. The first one I caught was like a CP of 50. And I was like, come on, man. Then I got this one, which is CP 280. But uh, at this point, I don't really care about powerful Pokemon. I just want the Pokemon um, to fill my Pokedex. And actually, I also caught a Pinsir as well in the wild. I think they're quite rare. You don't really get Pinsirs very often in the wild. Um, it was chilling by the big um, golf ball in Epcot. So that was quite handy. Um, and what was good about being in Disney as well, apart of from the fact I was in Disney, is that there was free Wi-Fi everywhere. Every park, every hotel, every toilet, every wherever you went, there was Wi-Fi. So I could do Pokemon Go wherever I went. So that was fun. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I've been playing Pokemon Go. Um, still playing it, still checking it now. But uh, my interest has definitely waned recently. I know there was that event over Easter where it was... Um, uh, double XP, which was really handy, actually, because I managed to level up to level 26, still only on 26. Um, but that was cool. Anyway, uh, Chris, what games have you been playing? Because I'm sure they're much more interesting. Well, Colin, I've got three that I think... Yeah, three. So I finished uh, I finished and platinum trophied Horizon Zero Dawn. I didn't think that sort of game you could finish. I thought it was like an open world... Just no, it's got, it's got like a story and, a, and a, an, an amount of missions. I mean, you know, you can keep playing if you want. But I, once I finished the story and got all the trophies, I was kind of like done for a while. But I will go back in when they do like a DLC or an expansion, which I really enjoyed. I think it's a really good platinum if you want to try and uh, go for it. It's kind of not frustrating. It's um basically it just rewards you for finishing the game to 100 and then doing a couple of tasks and yeah it's just a really good game the story in that game is 
really quite compelling and it's amazing i think it, the story's not really got the attention it deserves because it is really super um so i finished that finished playing that and then i've been playing costume quest 2 which have you played costume quest colin i think have you mentioned it before I might have talked about the first one a long yeah. time ago. Um, mm. It's a game set during Halloween. You play as these kids, and uh, they're wearing different costumes, and then the costumes that you wear are the ones that you wear in combat. So, for example, you start off the game with like a superhero costume, and uh, you get like a pterodactyl and uh, a politician, and then in combat, your moves will change to that. It's you know, the, it's very self-aware. The writing's very funny. Uh, it's kind of slightly frustrating gameplay, but it is good fun and it's like keeps you chuckling and it's kind of light enough that you can uh, indulge in it. But the game I really wanted to talk about, which I'm interested to know if you're keen for, you mm -hmm. might have missed the announcement for this, is a game called Marvel Heroes Omega. I have not heard of this. Let me Google. So, more sure Marvel play. Heroes came out on PC many years ago and is getting a PS4 and Xbox One re-release this spring. Um, although I would say, I would argue spring is over now, actually. So anyway, no, let's find the button. Start. Spring starts in April. No, it's, does no it? spring doesn't start in April. Fuck off. <laughs> what? The spring starts in April, right? Oh, is this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, go on. You go on in our spring... Well, if spring starts in April, that means that winter doesn't start till January. Isn't that right, though? Doesn't winter start like a... Like, winter only starts like the end of December, doesn't it? What? I'm pretty sure... No. No, I'm pretty sure this is correct. I'm pretty sure winter officially starts in December and autumn is like... Autumn, I don't, like, starts I don't in, like, think they have an official winter. start, do they? There is. There is I, honestly, there is a start. It's called like winter solstice or whatever it's called. I don't know. A winter. When does winter start? I'm Googling. When does winter start? Or right, maybe. Here we, ah, here we go. Winter starts on oh, the 21st cool, of December. So up your A crack. Because also, this, the same website says that autumn starts in September. Yes, that's probably correct. Well, most likely no, it's correct. No, I'm, well, I'm not having that. Anyway, <laughs> but that's by the by. Uh, so nice. it comes out. It comes out later on this year, and it's basically it's an MMO RPG. So yeah. it's one of those. It's kind of like RuneScape or that sort of vibe, but with RuneScape. Marvel characters. Of all the MMOs, you go for RuneScape. That is it's great. so. It's just. Uh, it's really quite something. I'm. I'm. I'm playing the beta. I'm hesitant to say it's good. Because I would argue that I've not played enough to really come down on either side of it. But it is really funny because there are certain areas where you'll see other like other people, other players, mm. and you just there's just this mass of heroes. It's amazing. As soon as like a bad guy pops up, you know, you'll be playing as like Hulk or something, and then fifteen different Marvel heroes will run over and start beating the shit out of it. And it's just so like it's like it's such a dog pile. It's really funny. Um, yeah. mm. So I've been playing that and I would recommend it. I think it's worth, uh, worth checking out. You've been playing on your PS4? Your yes, PS4. I am. So, I mean, I've, I'm not really, um, I don't have much knowledge or much experience playing MMOs. Um, so it's just a case of you log in, you're standing around in the big opening and then suddenly a enemy will appear and then everyone has to run and kill it is that basically what what, what okay, basically sort of yeah i mean it's missions you're all kind of doing the same story mm -hmm. and the same missions and looking to go to the same places but some enemies will pop up and you'll all be fighting against them some enemies will pop up and uh not and they're just for you so it kind of depends hmm. okay it's so just, yeah it's very good i'd recommend checking it out do you get to pick what hero you are or do you have to play as you like a... do um all the heroes are free yeah. Uh, when the actual game comes out, but you can only play them to a certain point, and then you have to pay to unlock them. Of You'll get. To, I think you can unlock like one or two for free, and then you can earn the currency, or you can just pay for it as well. I bet like it takes ages to earn the currency. I bet. They yeah, it's. it's really hard. I've played yeah. maybe an hour, and I've got eight splinters, and I think it costs four hundred. <sighs> so, I guess you'll get a hero every. 40 hours unless you want to buy one i suppose is how it'll work yeah well I, I do vaguely remember hearing about this when it was originally out i don't know whether it was it reviewed very well i, I don't really know is, was it one of those games where you had to pay it's like a subscription service um uh no it's always it's free to play i think it's always been free to play but you're right, right. i don't think it reviewed particularly well at the start 
But I think it's a good time. It, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how it develops. Well, I was, I was just going to say, it's probably a good time to release this sort of game because here, superheroes and Marvel are the in thing, but then they've been the in thing now for about five, six years. So bit of a, maybe it's because mm. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out. Which, have you, you say you've been to the cinema quite a lot recently. What film Yes, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, man. I saw it, it. Was it good? It's really, yeah, it's, it's very good. I would recommend oh, check, 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 yeah. check, checking it out. Yeah, I'm probably hoping to see it this weekend. I really do want to see it. I love the first one. Um, I love Chris Pratt as well. He's just, he's just, great in everything um so yeah i want to watch that and uh yeah marvel the superhero game sounds fun anything with superheroes in is probably guaranteed to be great can you play a spider-man that's the big question you can i've got spider i see Whoa. if you wanted to get into beta you had to buy um a uh like a foundation hack they're calling it which comes with a hero and spider-man is one that i got so the actual yeah. game not everyone's playing it yet because it's not being widely released. It's a closed beta at the moment. Yeah, cool. Well, that's good. Um, you know, is, is it a new? Is it a sort of game that you'd usually play that, that sort of genre? I know you played um, what's um, that other game you played, which was um MMO style, but you had to like big battles online on the PC. What was that? Are you thinking maybe Monster Hunter? Are you thinking of Monster Hunter? No, no, it wasn't Monster Hunter. Oh, what was it? It was like a, maybe it was a turn based oh, Dota. Game? That's it, Dota. I mean, we played. I remember seeing the picture. Uh, it's not really on like Dota, no. No, uh, it's not yeah, like Dota. It's good. Online sort of games are very, very limited. But uh, I'm glad you've been enjoying it. So we'll look out for that when it eventually releases properly, because I'm sure it'll be splendid when it does come out. Right. So um, we still got some things to talk about before we get into the proper news. So Christopher, the uh, whilst I was away, uh, whilst we were away, many things have dropped and in the world of handheld gaming there is news but i'm going to talk about something that's not handheld gaming related um it's just gaming in general and that is uh the first teaser for call of duty the new one for this year you know they have ones every single year and um unsurprisingly after the success potentially due to that success of battlefield one um is that, that's already come out hasn't it that was last year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, they all merge into one, really. Uh, so Call of Duty have gone back to their roots, where it all started for the series of Call of Duty, and they're going back to World War II, and very creatively, the game is called Call of Duty World War II. And I don't think anyone was surprised this was happening, because I of... feel, do you know, I feel bad for them, though, because everyone... The, the, the kind of common joke is that it's a rip-off of Battlefield, but... They've been developing that game for at least like two yeah. years. Yeah, it was interesting. Well, I saw um, a lot of people saying about that. How? Yeah, you're right. People are saying like, "Oh, they've just seen how popular Battlefield One is, and they're copying." But no, you're right. I mean, I, I, is there two or three development teams who work on Call of Duty games? I think it might be free, and um, each team. Yeah, it must be free because each team takes three years to develop the game. So this game has potentially been in development since, uh, what's it now, 2017? 2014 would have been um, since, you know, been in development since 2014. So it means they wouldn't have copied um, Battlefield. But then you can't help but think maybe, like, you know, one of the, I don't know how long it takes to make a Battlefield, Battlefield game. No idea. But maybe the developers... Are, um, uh, Sledgehammer Games, who are making uh, World War II Call of Duty, um, got wind of what the Battlefield team were doing and then decided to go down that route. Or it might have just been because it's been like this for a few years now where people have got a bit sick of the whole futuristic warfare thing. I don't know whether you've felt like this. Um, I, I haven't played, I didn't play last year's Call of Duty. I played the one the year before, I think it was Infinite Warfare. I think it was called that or something. No, that was this year's one, wasn't it? Infinite. The one before yeah, was Advanced was War. I don't know. Advanced Warfare 2. So, I, mean, I don't know, they'll merge into one. Um, but I think people are getting a bit sick of the whole, oh, there's jetpacks, oh, there's robots, oh, look at this. Like, mm. they, they're going further and further from what Call of Duty originally was. And I know Modern Warfare was obviously modern time, but it was just like your normal weapons and a good story. So I'm actually sort of glad they're going back to World War Two. And the trailer I saw, it, I mean, it was okay. I thought the trailer was good. It, it was funny, though, because it said at the beginning of the trailer it's actual in-game footage. But what they failed to tell you, that's not actually gameplay footage. It's just footage of oh, cutscenes cut and things like that, yeah. Which is um funny. I'm but, um, looking forward to this one because I I don't know about you, but I find that for me, Call of Duty's best feature is the multiplayer. Yes, and I find that the more like advanced and infinite and wazzy it gets, the more frustrating the multiplayer is. It becomes yeah. so like, oh, you got hit by a 
a stun trip by a robot dog, and now <laughs> the meteor satellite is coming. Whereas, yes. and in in a second, I'm sure we're going to talk about the first modern warfare. Yes, um, because the best for me, the best Call of Duty multiplayer have been the ones where the multiplayer has been this simple kind of um, arcade style feeling one, rather than these as it's grown and developed into this massive beer moth of a franchise yeah the more complicated and kind of intricate you know you've got all these different weapons you can modify with it to like an inch of their life and all this and i'm just really looking forward to hopefully with this world war um world war ii game that it will be simpler and that it will be you get a rifle and if you mm. get a lot of kills in a row you know, maybe you can do something interesting, but not this whole like massive weird marketplace it's become. Because for me, the game, the game where that started coming into play, but was manageable, but started coming to play was the was Modern Warfare. Mm. Because Modern Warfare, they took this like there was a, such a big leap with the multiplayer, and the multiplayer was really on the first Modern Warfare. Obviously, like me and you both put hours and hours in, but yes. it allowed it to become this massive headed beast. I mean, do you, do you remember when Modern Warfare, I think, oh, I think it was Modern Warfare 3, when that came out, they were like, oh yeah, why don't you download the Call of Duty app so you can do custom loadouts on the go yes. and play, pay £60 a year for Call of Duty premium WASI oh, subscription service. And it's like, what is this? Oh, I had the subscription to that because I bought the hardened edition, didn't I? The Modern Warfare. Yeah. 3. What, oh, what was it called? I can't remember. Um, oh, it was like Call, Call of Duty. Duty. I, I used it like once. I, it honestly, it was a, the Premium biggest waste something. of time. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd love if this game. Obviously, there will be kill streaks. Of course, there is. That's like a staple of. Um, uh, yeah, Gorgic. but like not. Hopefully, not to the level of how how it's become. Hopefully, it'll be just like Modern Warfare One, where it was like. Um, what was it? It was UAV for three kills, airstrike for five, and then the helicopter for seven. Like, yeah. and then you remember it was like Modern Warfare Two where they brought in the um, oh, the nuke. Where if you got twenty five kills, you could end the game with a nuke. Mm. Thus, like making like the whole game pointless, basically. But that's happening. This it's coming out in November. It's, it's earlier than usual. I think it's the first week of November. Normally, it's like the second or third week. So I'm actually quite interested. That I might pick it up maybe over Christmas. I don't know. I probably will pick it up. I mean, I, now it's a bit like FIFA for me now. I pick up the game every other year rather than every single year for Call of Duty. Um, the last one I bought, I had... It wasn't Infinite Warfare because that was this year. I can't remember what it was called. Maybe it was Advanced Warfare or something. But it was... Uh, I think it might have been the last one by Sledgehammer Games, maybe. But that was actually really fun. It's where they first introduced the jetpack, the double jump in the mm. online multiplayer. And that was actually really fun. I actually really enjoyed that one. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm all for going back to World War II. There's so many interesting stories they can go through um, with World War II as well. I can't remember the name of the team. It's an American... Um, force that they're focusing on but they were involved in d-day and they're also involved with one of the um the last battles of world war ii where the germans did an offensive like their last offensive before they got completely wiped out and then there's low and like thousands and thousands of american um, casualties like the biggest casualties they had in the whole war so that's gonna be really interesting to see um how they do that in the game so looking forward to that hopefully it'll be like saving private ryan that sort of uh thing anyway to Call of Duty, you've got one more last bit to say about this. So yeah. probably the week's most unsurprising news, and the news that's not surprised anybody, is that there's been some leakage, Chris, and you know it's not good to have any leakage, but it's actually potentially good news leakage because a listing has appeared for a standalone release of Call of Duty 4 Remaster. So you may remember when the game came out last year, and I'm going to confirm, was it, Inf yeah, it was Infinite Warfare that came out last year. Um, the developers... Um, I'm trying to think who developed that one. There's so many, the three developers who create, I don't know. Anyway, Activision, they came out and said, look, if you want to play the remastered version of Call of Duty 4, the only way you're going to get it is by buying this special edition of Infinite Warfare. Like, I don't know if it was called the Hardened Edition or the, the Special Edition, but it cost you about about 80 quid i think it was and you got a few extra perks you got the main game infinite warfare but then they threw in the remaster call of duty a call of duty 4 and it caused a lot of outrage because a lot of people were not really that interested in infinite warfare but really wanted that remastered call of duty 4 now as we've as you've said call of duty 4 was um 
that was a massive game for me in my gaming life. I absolutely loved that game. The campaign was brilliant. The online multiplayer, that online multiplayer pr pretty much changed the face of online competitive multiplayer forever. The whole way they did their matchmaking and the different games and we said the kill streaks and things like that. It sort of shaped online multiplayer going forward for not just Call of Duty and shooting games, but for online games everywhere. And I absolutely loved it. I, I spent hours and hours and probably days on Call of Duty 4 playing that online. Oh, I absolutely loved it. And that last mission in Call of Duty 4 in the campaign, absolutely incredible. Incredible. And Chris, are you taking a picture for your Project 365? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yay. Love it. But anyway, the last mission on Call of Duty 4, I don't know if you remember it. I don't want to... Can we spoil it? It has yeah, been about 10 years. Yeah, absolutely spoil it. It's been like... People have had years. children who are <laughs> old enough now to buy Call of Duty since that game came out. God, yeah. Basically, in the end of Call of Duty Four, you're you're chasing um, as a what was his name Zakehu, wasn't it? As a guy called something Zakehu, who was this evil guy who had nuked this whole town in Iraq, and he was like an evil person. He was a terrorist. He was planning all these bad things and i can't remember why he was so he was just a bad man basically and you've been chasing him and then the last mission you're on this bridge with your team but your um your backup aren't anywhere to be seen they're behind they're about five minutes away and all your team are on their own there's like five or six of you and you've got a whole army coming towards you and there's a bit where you're injured, you're on the floor. Captain Price, your, your captain, your, your pal, your best buddy is laying to the left of you. And you're looking around at your teammates who are all uh, who have part have been shot, they're dying, and it's like a very devastating scene. And as the camera goes back forward, you see the guy you've been chasing walking towards you with a pistol, slowly shooting everyone he sees who's still alive. So he pretty much he shoots one of your teammates in the head right in front of you, Gaz, who's probably one of the best characters in Call of Duty. I love Gaz. And like you have this burning hatred, but he's coming nearer and nearer towards you. Then suddenly the camera turns to the left and Captain Price gives you that pistol and you shoot him and his two sidekicks in three shots. And they're distracted by a helicopter because you're back up finally. It's just incredible. That ending was absolutely amazing. One of my favorite endings to a video game ever. Anyway, I'm getting off. I'm going off topic here. Basically, Call of Duty Remastered. Originally, um, Activision said that they wouldn't be releasing it on its own, but looks like they're going back on their word because a listing has appeared uh, on GameFly, and this was spotted by um, some called Charlie Intel. It's probably a Reddit username or something. Um, uh, so the page suggested that a remastered, is, uh, the remastered version of COD 4 is going to come out on its own, uh, and it listed that a PS4 edition would be launching on June the 30th, and the Xbox One version would be coming out a month later on July the 30th. So that's uh, about two months away, just under two months now. But obviously there's been no... Um, you know, there's been no information on this. Activision have kept stum on this, so it looks like this was posted prematurely. But this does give you hope, and I'd be, you know, I, nobody's surprised. I think everyone knew that they were going to be releasing it um, on its own. Because to be fair, I think they were silly for not doing. I can see why they didn't do it straight away, because obviously they wanted to push sales of Infinite Warfare. But then. The amount of money they would have made if they would have released it, you know, side by side, like that Call of Duty 4 remark, a lot of people wanted that. A lot of people, you know, one of their first big gaming experiences for teenagers and young adults, it was Call of Duty 4. And, you know, having that remastered with the online maps and, you know, um, remastered uh, graphics and sound and things like that would have sold so many. So the fact it looks like it is coming out on its own is not a surprise, but do you think there are people out there who are gullible enough to buy that hardened edition or that um, hardcore edition of Infinite Warfare because they thought that was the only way they'd be able to play Call of Duty Absolutely. 4 Remastered? So they are idiots, and they deserve to be slapped, basically. Um, but Chris, the important question, are you going to be... If, if this room is true... If this leak is true, would you pick up Call of Duty 4 Remastered if it was to release a PS4? Um, How can you think about that, man? I mean, I maybe. <laughs> I'll get it straight away, brah. What are you talking about? Call of Duty 4 is beaut. Is it your favorite one? Yes. A lot of people like Modern Warfare 2, but for me, the best one was COD 4. Modern Warfare 1 was the best one, in my opinion. I think Black Ops is my favorite. Black Ops is good. 
The story in Black Ops is amazing. Yeah, that big twist at the end, which I I I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see that twist coming at all when it was Mm. revealed at the end. Is it too soon to reveal that twist? Yes. You know. Yes, that's slightly too soon. Ah, that's so good. I can I just say (laughs) I am Victor Reznov, and I will have my revenge. That's the highlight. Um, Speaking of speaking of franchises, Colin, really quickly. Yeah. Really quickly, because we, we haven't even started on the handheld stuff yet, but <laughs> yes. uh, are you a fan of Darksiders? No, I know of it. So really quickly, I just wanted to talk about the fact Darksiders 3 has been revealed. Uh, it was actually originally leaked. I think, I, I think IGN were meant to have it as an IGN first, but then right. Amazon uh, product listings came out, and then it got properly announced. Um, so you, in the first one, you played as War, and in the second one, you play as Death. You're playing as the different horsemen of the apocalypse. And in right. the third one, you'll be playing as Fury. And uh, Fury is a mage who uses a whip and magic to restore the balance between good and evil on Earth. Awesome. It's an open-ended, free-form game. Um, Fury is going to go be going back and forth and has to defeat the seven deadly sins. Uh, and it's got that Darksiders style, which is kind of a bit Zelda-y, um, a bit uh, kind of beat em up I really love the first Darksiders. It's got a really special place in my heart because it's a lot like a Legend of Zelda game, but with a different theme and with kind of elements of like Portal and stuff mixed in. Um, I've been playing the second one on Wii U. I'm not as keen, but I do like it. But this looks really good. I'm well up for this. Uh, Darksiders 3 is meant to be coming out sometime next year. Mm. Awesome. So that's PS4, isn't it? You're playing that one. Uh, I see Xbox One and PC as well. There's a trailer if you want to watch it. Uh, it's part of the uh, on the IGN website. Sweet. Well, that's fantastic news, Chris. I'm very, very happy to hear that. Oh, yeah, you've tagged me. Great. You got my good side in that picture. Really good. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, pal. Anyway, if you want to see that picture, can we see your, twi- your Instagram handle? Yeah, of course you can. I need the clicks. At Bell End. No, it's uh, at um, Enter Soundman. Is it Enter Soundman? I think it's the same it for that is. one, isn't it? Enter yeah. Soundman all plums. All right, Colin. Right. Enough. Yes. Enough. I need to give you some 3DS news. Give it to me quick and fast. Well, no one really saw this coming. Uh, as last week, Nintendo announced the new Nintendo 2DS XL. Did you have a 2DS or have I made that up? No, I had a 2DS for about six months and I traded it in. <laughs> So this is the new 2DS XL, um, which is based on the... It's actually got a folding design uh, rather than the kind of brick design of the old one. It's been enhanced with a better processor. Uh, it's got a C-stick. It's got better screens as well. Basically, it's a new Nintendo 3DS XL, but in 2D. Deep mm. Library of Glades, playable in 2D, uh, including their plugging with it, Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, Fire Emblem Echoes, which comes out May 19th, and uh, Pikmin, which is July 28th as well. We'll embed the trailer on our Heroes of Handheld website. I think it's a really smart-looking piece of tech. Uh, they're saying it's going to be $150, and it comes out July 28th. There's a website as well. <laughs> I think like I think it looks really good. I think what they've done is managed to capture the, um, the, like, the kind of steady rock look of the 2DS, which looked, you know, stable, like it could take a beating. And they've managed to make that into a... Into a a folding design looks really good uh 82 larger screens apparently uh more powerful with a a fast processor built-in amiibo support as well and different shoulder buttons um so yeah it looks really good do uh do check it out we'll embed the trailer and do a link to the official website i'd love to know if anyone's thinking of getting this um because my i know people who bought the 2ds Mm because they wanted to access that library of games and i reckon a lot of them would upgrade to the 2ds xl look chris i'm not denying it looks very nice in my opinion this is what the 2ds should have been initially but don't you think it's a bit random oh yeah no it is totally random like what it's the hell? Totally, so it's random no one saw it coming but it's cool it's a good move it's, it's the console that no one saw coming and no one asked for so why are they releasing it i, I just think they're so unpredictable nintendo that's that's what's actually really cool about them is that you just don't know what their next plan is going to be they were just like there was not even any whisperings about this and then suddenly oh here's a new console for you Whee! well i wonder if it's a good um mid ground between the 2ds which is cheap 
uh well i mean it's not cheap but it's you know it's like around 100 pounds a little bit less and then the, the first model with the 3ds is i think sort of the 180 160 marks so and maybe this is a good middle ground um it's, in, it's interesting as well actually i i was gonna let you slip in some vita news but i'm not going to because a reddit users found out that um soon nintendo america support uh are going to aren't any longer repairing original 3ds systems hmm. so uh, nintendo no longer are offering factory repairs for the original 3ds sorry for the 3ds system not 2ds the 3ds so if you get a new 3ds a new 3ds xl a 2ds you're fine but if you bought one of the original Nintendo 3DSs and it breaks, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, well, I'll embed a link. This is in North America anyway. And Nintendo have come out this week and said that they're going to be supporting the 3DS into 2018. But it's kind of like, well, how is that possible when you've just said that the, the model that a lot of people have got, you aren't going to repair anymore? But it's quite an old um, console now, isn't it? It's been out for a while. I mean, it, it has, yeah, but... I guess, you know, I suppose they're wanting to move people onto the new one, aren't they? Because yeah. the new one means that uh, people will buy um, Amiibos for it, and it's kind of got better virtual console support as well. So yeah, we shall uh, we shall see. Yeah, I mean, I I don't really feel too down about this because surely you know that 3ds has been out for a very long time. So if people's 3ds and original ones are still breaking. And surely yeah, it's just it has been out for like five or six years, I suppose. I but. swear, since then, Nintendo have released like 20 different versions of the 3DS. So, this you know, if you've got an original 3DS, they're probably asking, they're probably doing it because they're thinking to themselves, Nintendo are thinking, why have you not upgraded? What else can we possibly release? How mm. else can we upgrade it? If you How else can we push it? Yeah, um, um, it's not a surprise really, but uh, yeah. that's a shame. But uh, at least they said they're going to be supporting it till 2018. So, that's still another year. Thumbs up for that. Right. Do you want me to do my last bit of 3DS news? And then hand, I can hand over to you. Just yeah, I'll sp- do it. I will. Uh, Fire Emblem comes out later this month. It's already out in Japan. Fire Emblem Echoes this is. And Nintendo have announced their season pass plans, which will cost you $45, 64 American dollars. Uh, so what's that about? Just over 30 quid. It's five different packs um, mm. and a free DLC as well. The Fledgling Warriors pack, which is... Um, meant to help you out at the beginning it's maps and dungeons the undaunted heroes pack uh all these are going to cost um their own individual price as well uh which will come out uh, in late may and it's maps and uh dungeons for the sort of hardcore players the lost altars pack which is 14 dollars 99 uh which is sets of different altars that lets you change your characters around and move, play with characters a bit rise of the deliverance which is a prequel series of stories and finally, that's it, actually, because I missed the thing. So uh, these look quite good. We'll embed a link on the Heroes of Hanhead WordPress site. You can have a little look. You save uh, more than 30% if you get the season pass. Um, yeah, Fire Emblem Echoes is kind of creeping up a bit, but it does look very exciting. So do have a look at this if you're interested in the Fire Emblem universe. Yes. Cool. That's really cool. Really cool, in fact. So cool that I'm going to move straight on to my Sony Vita news, Ooh. yeah? Do, do, do it. it. Right, so I'm going to quickly breeze through some PlayStation Vita news. Quite quiet, unfortunately, at the moment for Vita. But uh, as a lot of you will probably know, it's Golden Week in Japan, which is, um, it lasts about a week, actually. And this is a number of public holidays in Japan, all one after the other. So people complain that the UK get loads of um, bank holidays. Well, Japan get like a whole week off. So, you know, we should be looking at them and moaning at them. Um, so to celebrate Golden Week in Japan, Sony have announced a, um, as they do most years, a Golden Week sale. So unfortunately, at the moment, this sale is just for the US store um, for Sony and PlayStation. But I know usually they don't have a Golden Week sale in Europe. They just have their own version of a sale. But there's a huge, huge sale going on at the moment in the US on the store. And this covers uh, Vita, PS3, PS4. So loads of different games here. Uh, and in just a few um, listed here, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, 
uh, is currently um, $11.24, which is 55% off. Zero Escape, Zero Time Dilemma, which is that really cool one where um, a load of strangers are locked up in this dungeon and they've got to try and get out of their um, get out of their cages, but only a few of them can survive. So out of 10 of them, only four of them can live. So throughout the game, you have to decide who dies and who lives. But there's also a way of keeping everyone alive. So that's really cool. Uh, that's 40% off at $23.99. Uh, and there's a huge, huge list here of games that are on sale. I mean, just looking through them here. Let me sort them by PlayStation Vita, shall I? Let's have a look and see what we... Let's see what we've got for Vita. Um, Dragon Quest Builders is $27.99. Gladiator Begins, which sounds really cool. That's a PSP game, actually. That's for $3.19. Uh, what other interesting ones have we got here? We've got uh, Persona 4 Golden, which is always on sale, but that's $11.99, which is a big saving there. Really um, well-reviewed, that one. Uh, Dragon's Crown is $17.99. Uh, let's find one more big one. Let's go on to the second page and see what else we have. Uh, what's a big one? Da -da 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 -da. A lot of um, RPGs, JRPGs, which you know we love very much on this show. Um, let me tell you that Z Run, which is that zombie endless runner game, is only three dollars fifty nine. That's down from nine dollars. So uh, a big variety of games there. And if you are a Sony or PlayStation owner, if you've got um, any of the consoles, Vita, 3D, not 3DS, Vita, PS3 or PS4, there's bound to be a game that will fit your needs. So definitely check out the sale. Uh, it's only going to last till the um, well. Actually, Golden Week ends on the 5th, which is in two days, I believe. Yes, a couple of days' time. So uh, don't delay. Check out the sale today. So moving on to some more PlayStation Vita news. So it shows how long it's been since we last recorded the podcast, because I swear the last thing I spoke about was the PlayStation Plus games for April. But now... We've got the PlayStation Plus games for May, which have been released. So um, let's have a read through here. The two games coming to PlayStation Vita for free, if you are a um, PlayStation Plus subscriber, is Type Semicolon Rider, and this is coming to PS4 across by. Uh, it is, let's have a look at what game this is. It's an inventive indie build side-scrolling platform and puzzle game um, which uses oh it's I remember this one that uses fonts from the history of typography so there's loads of puzzles all linked to different fonts we did speak about this one I, I vaguely remember this so check that out it's very unique and uh, very strange but this article says check it out because it is really cool and also laser disco defenders um, a twin stick shooter um, that's coming to PlayStation Vita, PlayStation Plus as well. So it's just a twin shooter, and it's very disco-y and loads of bright colors and loads of cool music. So check those out if you, um, you know, you're know, you a PlayStation Plus subscriber and you've got a Vita still, definitely check those ones out. Uh, the big one for you, Chris, I don't know whether you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, aren't you? I am, yeah. You've played Tales from the Borderland, haven't you? I have, yeah. It's one of my favorite Telltales. Yeah, that's um, on PlayStation Plus. For PS4, so that's pretty good. So, if you're not played Tales from the Borderland, definitely check that one out because it's recommended by Chris, so you know it's really good. And also, you, you don't need to have played much, you don't really need to play Borderlands to get it. It's kind mm. of it, it does a good enough job of explaining the backstory, so don't let that put you off. Nice, right? So, last bit of news then a game trailer has been released for oh, I'm probably going to completely butcher this name. Uh, I, Iwa Ahaimi Matsuri. Uh, I, 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 me, Matsuri. I'm, pr I'm probably saying that completely wrong, but it's an upcoming horror game coming to Vita and PS4. It's developed by Nippon Ishi Software, uh, and this trailer is very creepy. I've had a quick watch of it. Um, a lot of creepy images there. If, I'd probably say don't watch it before you go to bed because. Yeah, the music's quite daunting. There's a lot of um, anime girls with creepy red eyes. There's girls with antlers for some reason. There's loads of big spooky looking creatures with loads of blood everywhere. So yeah, nobody really knows what's going on with this. There's not much information at the moment about it, but um, it's going to be coming out to PlayStation uh, Vita and PS4 on July the 20th. That's just in Japan at the moment. So hopefully it'll come to the West at some point, but uh, we'll embed this trailer into the article for this week's podcast. So if you like seeing anime girls with antlers, then this is the video for you. Definitely yes. check this out. Yes. Uh, right. So that's my Vita news done. So, I want to quickly go through some Nintendo Switch news as well. I'm just going to have a look mm. at this news. So it's all really, really great news from the world of Nintendo Switch. Just positive story after positive story. But the one weird story that's come out this week is that it turns out, I mean, this is just a rumor at the moment, but I think it's been confirmed. There's been a long-running rumor that there's going to be a Mario and, a Mario and Rabbids 
RPG game. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the rabbits are those weird, like, creepy rabbits with really big mouths and creepy eyes. There was a few games that came out years ago where there's like mini games with them. Didn't they originally start as a Rayman thing? It started the first game was on Wii and it was Rayman yeah. Raving Rabbids and it was a That's it. mini games. But yeah. since then yeah they've kind of spanned into their own it's their weird. own thing really. They did a lot of stuff on the Wii. It's creepy. They remind me of the minions. Like they're really popular but you just don't know why. You just don't get it. I don't get it. Um anyway so there's gonna be a um a uh, crossover game with Mario and uh, Rabbids, and it's going to be an RPG. RPG. Um, so looking at this article, which is from uh, Kotaku.com, um, let me just read this through, and then we'll get a bit more information on this. So the game will mix Nintendo... In, sorry, I can't even talk. The game will mix Nintendo's iconic plumber and his friends with characters from Ubisoft's popular Rabbids series. Although the person who sent the assets asked us not to share them, they collaborated the existence of a bizarre crossover RPG that's currently scheduled to come to Switch in either August or September. So it looks like um, Kotaku have got a inside source, but um, it's weird. It's saying like they, this source told them not to reveal this news, but they have anyway. So Whoopsie! So this has been developed by Ubisoft, so they're actually the team who do Rayman games as well. So um, don't people don't know much information about this at the moment. Um, the main selling point is that it's going to be turn-based combat. Uh, there's going to be two-player local co-op, and of course, a goofy sense of humor. And nine characters, I think, have been confirmed for this so far. Um, we've got Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Peach, and four. <laughs> And this is really weird because we've got those four, there's eight characters. There's these four characters, Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Peach. And then bizarrely, there's going to be four rabbits who are dressed up as Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Peach. So there you that go. Is really weird, isn't it? This is really weird. We'll probably get more information on this at E3, I'd imagine. Um, what, when is E3? That's coming up soon, isn't it? It's coming ever nearer. Yeah, it's, like, it's early June, isn't it? E3, let's have a look. E3 is... I think it's normally June, isn't it? Um, when is it? I think it's early I think it's early June. E3? Oh, great. I've got, I clicked E3 and it's taken me to the Intel website. Well, that's really helpful. Uh, sorry, it's the 13th to the 15th of June. So still quite a bit of time, yeah, over a month. But uh, I really think that this year's E3 is going to be really interesting with um, the Nintendo Switch now part of the um, group. I think Nintendo are probably going to reveal some a lot of games because they keep teasing that they've got loads more games they get to reveal for Nintendo Switch. So I reckon we're going to get a load of new game announcements and we're probably also going to get news of a brand new Switch model that's coming out, the Switch XL, which will have no problems and won't have any dodgy Joy-Cons. So yeah, uh, right. So what else are they going to talk about? Oh yes, we've got some more Switch news. So this is all the good news. So this is something from NeoGAF, uh, where they have revealed that the Nintendo Switch is actually the fastest-selling Nintendo console ever, and that's including the Wii, the Wii U, and crap like that. So looking at the sales figures, it's saying Nintendo Switch system has sold more than nine hundred and six thousand units in March. That's in according to the NPD group, and they track video game sales in the US. Uh, and that does make Nintendo Switch the fastest selling games console in Nintendo's history. Um, notably, this sale uh, this sales surge was accomplished in a non traditional month for a console launch. So what they're saying is, like all these massive sales. Um, and sales figures when it's the sort of time when people aren't really looking to buy games console like it wasn't near Christmas time there's no really big public holidays coming up but yet it's still sold a lot um, and even more interesting is that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that sold 1.3 million units and that includes 925 units for Switch and 460 um, versions of it for the Wii U so just great news, really. The Switch is doing so well, and I mean, does this does this mean that the Switch is officially a success? Is it a successful console, or, or is it too soon? Or is it too soon to say, Chris? Are you asking me, or is that rhetorical? I'm asking you. Well, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because I, anecdotally, I, I'm knowing more and more people who are thinking of buying one. I just, I find it, it's amazing that it's sold so much, given that there's still such like little amount of, hot of uh, games for it. It does sort of show that people have a lot of trust in Nintendo as a company. Abso yeah, absolutely. And it shows as well, 
if ever it was doubted, it shows the pull that Zelda and Mario Kart have got as far as it is. Yeah. They are, they are the, the big hitters, aren't they? And that's Nintendo, managed to I mean, reel like, millions of people in. Mario Kart to 8 Deluxe has had great reviews across the board. I watched a few videos of the new tracks they've introduced and the battle mode. And it just looks so much fun. I saw a really cool um, picture on Reddit, actually, on Nintendo Switch. Actually, it made the front page, I think, um, where there was eight people like um, playing Switch. Like, there's eight different Switch consoles, and they'd link them all together, and they're all playing Mario Kart. It just looks so cool. It's so much fun. Uh, and talking of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it's the fastest-selling Mario game ever absolutely ever it sold 459,000 copies on its launch day in the u.s alone that's incredible that's unbelievable so it's just like one bit of good news after the other so the game that held the record previously was mario kart for the wii that was 433,000 copies that was back in 2008 so this has beaten that by over 20,000 copies so i am very surprised by this that it sold so many copies that just seems bizarre to me you know um i'm mean, looking through this article it's just, it's just you know, it's just so nice to have this all this positivity about the Nintendo Switch and the games that are coming out for it. Because, like, it feels like lately we've had a lot of negativity towards handheld gaming devices or various um, mm. things, obviously. A lot of people bashing the Vita. The Vita's always had a bad time anyway. Um, the um, Ouya, which came out a few years ago, that android -y device thing, which did terribly... Um, it's just so nice to have this, you know, this console getting great reviews. Even when the PS4 and Xbox One came out, there was like, you know, people were saying they were good, but there was always negative connotations to certain aspects of them. But the Nintendo Switch, on the most part, it's just been all positive, which is the only negative I've found. Yeah, it's nice to have a, like a surprise, isn't it? It's lovely. So yeah, that's I think it's really nice that. Go ahead. Hello. Good. Good. Yes. It's, it's just not, it's nice that it's been like a surprise isn't it because we like i i feel like especially i was really naysaying on it but people are, lo are loving it and I, I love this kind of culture of like just let people just let people enjoy it you know i feel like with with playstation and xbox whenever they post something on like facebook which is my metric for how they engage with the audience there's such a response of like oh bring it to xbox uh PlayStation is the best. Oh, uh, this and that. And with Nintendo and this console, it's just so like, so joyous. Like people are just l buying this console and just falling in love with like with Nintendo and with Zelda and with Mario Kart. And it's just so like, it's so bloody good to see. It's just nice seeing yeah. people being positive. In my opinion, Nintendo just breeds positivity and happiness amongst gamers. Like they're such a happy company with great games. You know, mm. you know it's just so good. Anyway. We've talked for too much. We need to get out of here. We've been talking for almost like an hour and a half. What the hell's going on? It's been an hour and 20 minutes. Right. Anything else you want to say before we wrap up this podcast? Uh, have a nice week. And it's not been an hour and 20 minutes because you were late because you were taking this shit. Thanks very um, much for listening to Heroes of Handheld this week. May, December. <laughs> right. Uh, Heroes of Handheld this week. Oh, by the way, how was the food in America? Did you, did you put weight on? Oh, I think I did. Basically, we yeah. had a dining plan. Let's give, briefly talk about this. I had a dining plan, which means all food was already paid for. So we had one quick oh, service, boy. one table service, two snacks a day. Their snacks are fucking huge, honestly. Like, if you follow me on Snapchat, I'll, I'll see if I've got a picture. Like, I bought this massive Mickey cookie. It was, like, that big. And it had, like, ears smothered in chocolate. Oh, man, the food there is incredible. It, honestly, there's not really anything healthy in sight, but it's so good. Everything we had was great, great quality. And I need to literally tell you about something that i've just a revelation here something called i think they're called corn dogs maybe basically they were little mm. frankfurters covered in cheese and covered in breadcrumbs and they were oh. the dog's bollocks they really were so good the only bad thing is that when a few times we asked for chips and they gave us crisps instead oh uh, schoolboy idiots i know bloody fools uh, but yeah food was great and i think i have put some weight i've got a bit of a belly now but i regret nothing nothing and also if you want to follow my adventures at disney you can subscribe to me on youtube all the links will be in the article for this week's podcast more vlogs to come i've already done one you can watch it now it's really good it's about the first day we were there
Thanks for listening to Hear Us for Had on episode 177. You can go to Twitter slash Handheld Podcast. You can like us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube and on handheld.wordpress.com. Every week we post an article, which is like, if you can't listen to the podcast, you can just read the article and uh, that will give you the info. Obviously, we'd love you to listen. Send us an email at gmail.com thanks very much to um the snarge radio orchestra for the music for this week's episode which is great from the album music for 1950s video game and uh, there's the track insert coin colin i'm dying here yeah stay Bye. safe have a nice week uh next week we'll be back yes we will be back i can't see why we won't be nothing's going to stop us now we're hurtling ever nearer to episode 200 crazy wow what are we gonna do for that? Are we gonna like only five like, months away? <laughs> hey, it'll come quick. It'll be Christmas. We'll have we'll both have switches and we'll both have PS5s, which apparently is coming out next year. PS5 is coming next year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before we finish, no way is PS5 happening next year. That's what they're all saying. That's what everyone's talking about. Could it be? No, not happening. All right, bye. Bye everyone. Love you. Bye.